So welcome, brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah, good to back, be here. Good to good to see you again. You always slide in <laughs> at just the right time. The you right have time. Gandalf timing. <laughs> you are the Gandalf timingest motherfucker of all motherfuckers, <laughs> Barangi. You just come right in when things are going. They're wild, and you just drop that soothing medicine in. Mm. Drop that that ditch that. <laughs> yeah. And we go. Oh. Wait, there's something else that we could be paying attention to besides the turbulence in our own mind and all these little <laughs> dramas that I forget about a month later, but right now they're so fucking important. And then you're... <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> got it. That's it. Gandalf timing. Gandalf timing. <laughs> Wizards always on time. <laughs> That's what they say. For Wizards sure. always on time. Well, you've been in your own creative process for a while here because you just birthed a new album brand new album yeah two years in the making so to me it's not so new <laughs> i was ready like this baby's ready come on so yes thank you guys it's it's so good to have that out in the world now yeah and selfishly i'm very glad as well because i've yeah. worn the shit out of your old tracks i know, I know. The other, and Sorry. the remixes I know. on your old tracks so this is great it's so good this is good news all around and and there's a lot more coming so we we just released today actually uh, the first music video of the album so every every this album it's a live album so it was all of what i'm going to be doing today um, creating with this rig here. And today makes no sense for the listeners at home <laughs> right. because this is going to be released at a much different point. But go back in time. Imagine that it was today. Time travel. <laughs> so good. But it's um, where we basically took these performances from shows that were shot with multi-cameras and was edited so, so people can actually see, not only hear the music, but then see how we built it, how it was made in the moment with the living, breathing dance floor. Um, totally in the moment, totally improvised. And that's a big part of the medicine is just getting out of the way and really listening and see what happens. And so these, these seven tracks were created that way. Um, and so the first of the videos was released today. It's called Danza del Viento. And you know, when I made this, when this I say I made it, I didn't really make it. You know, I just kind of channeled it, I guess, is the best way I could say it. Because, yeah, I can't claim it. it right. It's really not me, you know? It, the best music happens when it's not me, in fact. <laughs> If you know that's what I'm the saying. That's the dance, though, because what's interesting is, is that you have to prepare your instrument to be clear and capable enough to translate the messages that come through, right? Because I can say the same thing. You know, I mean, you were able to be there with me at the podcast with Nako, and there was moments where I emptied out, and I couldn't have mispronounced a word if I tried. Like, there was a, one of my favorite lines of Bohemian Rhapsody was when Freddie Mercury, the, the actor playing it, I don't know if he actually said this, I'm hoping that he did, but he says... You know, when I'm with the audience, when I'm really with him, when I'm really with him, darling, I couldn't sing off key if I tried. You know, right? And there's like moments where I'm sure like you couldn't play the wrong note if you tried because it's not you playing it. And the thing that is actually playing the notes is in its perfection and, and it's just coming through you. But nonetheless, he had to train his voice and he had to practice. You have to, you know, play the instruments and practice. I have to practice my craft of yes. creating words and putting yeah. ideas and thoughts together and sometimes it's clumsy and sometimes you fumble and sometimes you've made fucked up sounds out of your instruments and sometimes freddie mercury has sang like shit you know but yeah. when you open up when you prepare yourself then you get out of the way then that's when the magic happens right absolutely so yeah. it's that blend of like the we hard work the discipline those hours just put in you know, a, a, a wizard that we both know and respect and love uh, once said, you know, to be of service, you must be first fit for service. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you know, he hit it on the head in that because it's, it's the same. It's really the same thing at the core, right? It's how do we prepare ourselves? How do we how do we train? How do we practice? And in practicing also means having fun and, and enjoying that practice. It doesn't have to be this this suffering process, but sometimes it's very suffering. That's some of the good, greatest things that I've, that I've learned and, and embodied have been through going through really difficult experiences, you know. Um, but when we do all of that and then we show up in any given moment, then it's like you're always active, you're always on, you're always listening. And that listening, getting out of the way, just really listening, the deep listening. And the thing, one thing my father taught me when I was, when I was little, one of the greatest things he ever shared with me, um, was he put a guitar in my hands at about the age 12. And he taught me just to hold it and just to listen. And he'd say to me, he'd say, look, sometimes 
just listen to what you can add to this moment that's going to be beautiful. And sometimes that's silence. Mm -hmm. and so just really listening so deeply and just like waiting. It's like, okay, now what, what can I compliment these birds or this wind or what, what's happening in this moment? You know, in the Aya documentary, when I did that soundtrack, it was that. Like yeah. those recordings of the jungle and, and our work down there, that's what inspired it. I listened to each of those from the different moments of the night and the different insects and the different birds and different animals calling. And that was like what brought forth each of those songs. And that's, that's really it. It's like that kind of. You know, so the music is a craft in which you can apply this or words or poetry or these things. But conversation oh. is another way that you can apply <laughs> the same thing, right? Like we have so many things we want to say. Here, let me hear. Let, let's everybody hear what I want to say. You know, but so much of a conversation is the listening. And whether that conversation is expressed through your vocabulary or expressed through your touch, let's say you're with a lover or a friend and it's expressed through your touch. Or playing. Or body play, work. playing, yeah. whatever. Whatever yeah. it is. Or playing with, a, playing with a kid, you know, totally. like a, my four year old nephew, right? Like to play with him properly, you're just listening to what, what thing is in the ether that could cause that little peeling giggle that could come out, right? You don't, you're not, you don't have a plan about it. It's not like, well, I think the peekaboo method works well. I'm going to apply the peekaboo method, and that's going gonna, it's gonna, to, maybe, maybe, but you got to listen for that, right? And, and like, same with making love. Like, may, it's not always the same thing. You know, when you come with this preconceived notion about what you need to do and, and how you need to be, and you're not actually paying attention, well, it's, it's not going to be the optimal scenario because that self-judge is going to be in there. And that self-judge is the antithesis of medicine. It's the antithesis of listening because it's always judging everything you're saying rather than allowing you to just relax and hear. What is the body saying? What is the moment saying? What does what the guitar want to say? What is the flute? How does it want to sing? How does my voice want to express myself? What are the words that want to come out through my tongue? Like, what are the things? And you have to, you have to get still and practice being still yeah. in order to listen to that. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a really beautiful way that I like to think of it. You know, it's, a lot of times we think about listening as this thing that just we experience through our ears and through our eardrums. And we really forget that, you know, listening actually happens on all levels of our physical being, all our senses, you know, our smell, our taste, the touch. Literally, like when we go into loud systems at a festival, say, or to a club or something, you know, you have big bass systems. You're feeling that in your body. That's actually something. It's not even your ears that is, is perceiving that. It's a physical, kinesthetic energy that's hitting you and rippling through those vibrations. And all the time, if we can open our senses, often we don't. But if we can, if we can come to that stillness, even if we're in traffic, even if we're in a, in a shopping center trying to get groceries in line, you know, just to still ourselves and really listen to, with all our senses and open up, oftentimes it's overwhelming. And so we're actually trying to block all that and try to like you know not get overload but when we can when we can actually create that space and start to listen we perceive how much is constantly going on how much is already in the space it's always full kind of like how you and nako last night were talking about you know we're never alone mm. you know we're never truly alone it's it's really similar it's like when we listen from that deep place of the heart with all of our senses fully activated then you hear the symphony that's always going on and it's a cacophony often in the city, unless you can kind of like appreciate all the noises of the AC units and the electrical buzz, the hum, the 50 hertz and 60 hertz hums off of the electrical systems, you know, and the grid, all the machine people, you know, I like to call them, you know, that hang out in our houses, right? And all the, the different machines that turn on and off. But when we can just start to listen and it's like you really start to see, wow, it's, it's really noisy. Is it, you know, and how and where in the noise can I even appreciate that noise? and find the beauty still. I actually feel like it's noisy. It's like a bell curve, right? But it's a bell curve through the octaves of our expression and through our own understanding. It is noisy. It can be noisy through the ears. It can be noisy through the mind. It can be noisy. And, it, and the more you open up to listening through your ears, the more things that you'll hear, and the more you just focus on the mind, the more thoughts might become distracting and discordant and all of these things happening at the same time, and you don't know but then you keep listening through, and no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, there is that 
back at the very at the other side, right? So as if you were in a sensory deprivation tank, as if you were in a float tank where there is nothing but the stillness that's there. It doesn't matter if you're in an airport, if you're in traffic or wherever you are, if you listen through the noise of your own mind and through the noise of the environment, you'll find yourself listening back to that same singular note, the note that is the backdrop of all life, that gentle rage of love that just keeps pushing everything forward. <laughs> you know, that thing, yeah. which is always there, which is behind all of it. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what is happening, if you keep listening through it, you'll go back to that gentle, gentle rage of love that has one note with the variations that we get to move to and dance to. And I think that's the invitation, is to hear that. And that's, to me, that's, the, that's what gives me the perspective, right? Is to go back and find those notes. Because imagine a, a medicine journey, you know, a plant medicine journey or a toad medicine journey or something like that, right? Like you pierce through this, all of the lights and all of the colors and all of the visions, but behind it, it's what's behind it that is really recalibrating to the strongest degree because that's the unicity, and the unicity is all things expressed at the same time, which together makes one sound, which couldn't be disharmonious, because it's all things. It couldn't be anything that has contrast to be disharmonious or be discordant, because it's all things. So you call that God, you call that love, you call that life, you call that whatever you want to call it, you call it the universe. I don't care about your vocabulary, source, whatever. But that thing... And that's where all of the real listening goes to. And that's where the, the muses are. And that's where the music comes from. And that's where the love comes. That's, that's where the real source is. And then we get to play it out in all of its different fractal ways, our own unique way that our instrument can interact with that bass tone. You know, if it's bass and high tone, it's bass and treble. It's all the tones. But the way that we can choose to interact with that and play with it. Yeah, you, you bring up a good point. You know, I, I would almost say, take it a step further and say, it's what we're, all the sounds happening at once, that is a th an experience. But it's also, it's, it's the moment before that. It's the zero, the silence. It's the emptiness from which everything can be birthed. It's the blank canvas. And it's that, that background radiation, if you will, right? That field that's there at the edge of the cosmos that's the primordial sound we could say that we might equate to the sound of the didgeridoo, for instance, mm -hmm. right? The most ancient sound that we know. Um, that sound, Schumann's resonance, they talk about Schumann's resonance, the frequency at which the earth actually has a resonance down around seven, eight hertz. And it's a frequency that's measurable that they've shown in studies actually where human beings, when they're in isolation from that frequency that's always there, they actually get incredibly sick. So it's something we actually need our body needs this frequency, in fact, which has to do with the actual atmosphere and the way that the atmosphere is formed, the way water moves, the way lightning and thunder strikes. All of this has a play in this. So it's like we are part of this biosphere. Sometimes we think we're isolated and we're separate from it and we're invincible. And it's really a, a deep piece of our sickness, of our colonization within ourselves that we have to decolonize and get out of that mindset because it is about, in fact, that deep listening like when a bird sits on that branch and they're sitting there and they're not thinking about, man, what song am I going to sing right now, you know? <laughs> oh, there's that one oldie. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a goodie. <laughs> yeah. You know, they just sing, right? They don't have that filter that we've, we've evolved with, right, as the monkey minds, as the monkey people. And those birds may be a little horny, too. You they know? may be. I mean, they may be, they may be singing to get the pretty bird across the way, Maybe. but still... They're, well, they still listening. Just They're still listening to whatever that thing, whatever that call is going to be. It's not a denial of, of their own animal self. It's no. the incorporation no. of their animal self, right? So I think we also have well, to be careful to, to not judge ourselves like, well, well, this is me just, this is, this is the me. Well, you are part of the all, too. Like, the whole earth is the Schumann resonance, the whole thing together, and like our whole thing together. And we can choose different parts of it, but let's not leave ourselves outside of that. Just know that we have the choice to fluctuate and pick which spots we want to go, but we're still always a part of it. Absolutely. You know, no, all is of or nothing is. That's what Paul Selig channeled through the wisdom there, mm -hmm. like, and really recognizing that. So we don't place ourselves in this, here's the sacred 
pile, and here's the profane pile, and here's the divine pile, and here's the human pile, and let's judge constantly and decide where we're at, and then shit on everybody else who has what we perceive to be less of the sacred pile and more of the profane pile. Let's shit on them and make our own ego feel better, right? That's the crux of spiritual materialism, is the denial that all is of. But nonetheless, there's still something to be understood with that, okay, when you actually know that, then you can listen, then you can love you. You're just looking for the note behind all the chaos. So even if it's your family and they're back and stuck in some loop, some bad pattern, like you put your, your foot down on the wrong pad and you got the wrong sound and it's playing over <laughs> and over again. But behind that is music. And with all of us and every single one of us, behind whatever is being expressed is music. Always. Always. It's all music. Muse, the muse, is where it comes from. Music, its roots is saying the muse and the emotional energy of the muse. When we can tap into that, that current, it's always there. I think one of the pieces that we get caught up in, and like you're talking about the self-judgment, the critique, the criticism, the, the little voice. Anybody resonate with that out there? Anybody know what we're talking about? Yeah. So that little voice, you know, and, and it's there was like seven gods out in our thing. Didn't raise their hand. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna sit. If everybody who didn't raise their hand can form a little circle, I'm just gonna bathe in it. Because if, if you have no, if you have no self criticism, then please just like touch me as I walk please. through the crowd, so I can get a little bit of that vibe. Because that's pretty universal as far as I've seen. And so the the, I think the invitation, as we move through life, is to unravel that voice, unravel it and, and really kick it out. Kick it out of your mind, out of your heart, out of your being. Really get, you know, evict that voice as soon as you can. And it's not, it, he's going to keep coming in, you see, because he's kind of like the tax collector, right? He's like, he's always, he's going to come back. It's like everyone has him, right? It, we all have to deal with this on some level. And you're really like, wait, why, why is this person here? And, and, and do I really like the energy that he's taking from me and how he's using that energy, right? But I don't think we do, right? We know where it's going, and I'll leave it at that. And so, so the invitation is to constantly to be able to observe that. The moment you see that filter come up and that judgment come up, and to go ahead and acknowledge it, and then to release it and to do it anyway. Let that voice open up. Let that note, the next note, come out of you without any fear. You know, and this is really, I feel, the, the greatest invitation. And, and I've, you know, you've said this over the, over the years. You know, it's that deepest fear, that, that place, deep in the dark place of your, your deepest self, that's where your medicine is. That's exactly where the work is that we have to do. So if you're scared of opening your voice, scared of opening the instrument that is you, this beautiful bird that came to sing, you were gifted these two chords. We were all birthed with two chords built in. You don't have to go to Guitar Center to buy them. We waste them on the blah, blah, blah. But it's really about opening our voices, all of us. And that's a deep belief that I've carried through my life that was shown to me by spirit and, and by my ancestors. And it's something that I, I walk every day, finding ways that how can I inspire others to open their voice, like the work we've done over the years. You know, it's and no matter what, no matter what you're going through, Letting that come through you is going to be connective medicine. It is only the resistance to that based on your self-judgment, based on your trying, which is like casting little black magic spells of seduction. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm doing good. Everything's good. Yeah, everything's great. Like, what's up? Yeah, I'm cool. You know, like that thing, everybody's going to feel it. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll catch a few people who aren't paying attention with your shiny lures of false bullshit. But ultimately, no matter what, situation you're in when you just express it and just sing it as it is if it's a cry of anguish or a, the voice of love from your heart whatever that thing is like just let it out it's all okay because we all feel the same thing and whenever you do it you give permission for other people to do it and then everybody sees themselves in you and that's the basis of connection to see same oh same oh oh we're not alone we're not alone. We're all going through this experience Ever. together. But so many times, you know, we try, we try, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. Or just be, just be, be. Oh, man, being. Ooh, 
Yeah. I can just be? Wait, I can just be? No, no, no. No, I'm going to just judge myself for my whole fucking life. Go from here to the end in self-judgment and trying. <laughs> nah. Why? Why would we do that? But we do that. Well, we could just be. I think, you know, a, a big piece of it, in, in your defense, in my defense, in your defense, <laughs> is, is I feel like we, we're little kids on a playground. And we're just having a blast, man. Just a blah, 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 blah. You know, it's whatever, <laughs> right? Running around, playing tag, catch each other. You know, just having a blast in our full power and potent innocence. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're there making sound. And, and somebody, might be someone older, maybe someone who's been through some trauma, right? They turn and they're like, shut up. You sound terrible. Knock it off. What's that awful noise you're making? Right? And guess what? We believed them. And in that moment, a spell was cast, and we swallowed the spell, and it became a poison, and the first layer was put over our cords. The first layer was put over our hearts. The first you know, scar. I remember sometimes when it concerned love that I was always uh, kind of a romantic at heart. You know, I was always... Uh, I had a poet's soul from an early age. Not you. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> and uh, I remember I would really like a girl, and I would, I would write, I'd write her a poem, or I'd write her something like heartfelt and try to express it. And this was in middle school and, and you know, at the start of high school. And I, it failed every time. My failure percentage of really being authentic with how I felt failed every time. And that was fucking tough because you're like, Hey, I really, really, really like you. And they're like, gross. <laughs> I want the challenging thing because I'm not sure I really like myself. And if this is too easy and I don't really love myself, I don't, I don't want to accept this. I want to go for the, the one who doesn't really like me because that will validate me even more. But I didn't have that. I didn't understand that. I didn't know that was the process and that was the, the, op, the modus operandi of what was going on. I was just like, yeah. well, fuck. Yeah. Every time I express myself, I don't get what I want. So... Let's try another strategy, I guess, you know? Exactly. And, and so little subtle things, yes, exactly like you're saying, with the voice of laughter or dance or something that has happened, but even the voice of romantic love. You know, when you're with someone who isn't in that place of accord to receive that love and feel worthy of that love and appreciate that, then you're going to learn something from the world, and that is going to pattern a set of trauma that you're going to be reacting against for a long time. Until yeah. you release it, until you decide it doesn't fucking matter, love me or not, I'm going to say it like it is and just mm. keep saying it like it is. And if you are in accord with that, you will receive it. If you're not in accord with that, bless you. All good. But you don't stop and alter your song and create some manufactured manipulative song to try and catch, like you're trying to catch a fish with a plastic lure, like a little squid lure. You know, Come just on, be Barbie, you. let's go party. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, that music is, it, music does do that, right? If we can bring it into the world of music, right? We all experience music, pop music, right? The music that is, that is on, played on the radios, and most of the music we hear and that we've been bathed in, in our Western culture, right, is very narrow in the grand spectrum of infinite sound, of vibration, right? Not even now, we're just going to say, like, Look at all vibration, right? From, from the far infrared all the, way, all the way up, right? The full rainbow of colors is just that little piece. And now we take a subsect of that, our 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz that we hear with our ears that we can perceive if we still have good hearing. You know, if we haven't listened to too many <laughs> really loud things in our lives. And then even of that, right? Then we look at the world and all the cultures, all of our ancestors, all the peoples from around the planet and the different sounds in ways that they've made music since the beginning of, of history as we know it, right? And just think about that. And now take a subsect of that, the smallest sliver of that, and you have music here. And just let's look at the last 100 years, or less than that. Let's look at the last 60 years since the advent of recording. And now you're looking at that sliver. Now who has access to recording for so long? You know, more recently, now everyone because of the internet and what have you and the tools we have. But that's been super controlled and regulated. Only certain people have access to that. And then access to how to get that into everyone's face and ear, right? Now you look at who has access to that now. 
and today, and it's still this tiny, 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 tiny sliver of a sliver of a sliver, and they, is, that's all from these influencers, these tastemakers, who are saying, this is what you should be listening to. This is what good music is. This is what a good, something in tune sounds like. That's all a perception and a construct from a cultural perspective I don't that even comes think out of I colonization. Don't even think I don't even think they're saying that. I think they're saying, how can we make money? Well, no, exactly. I, like, I, mean, like, how, like, I don't even think they, they really think this is good music. It's like, uh, what's going to sell? Like, like what's gonna, and, and pandering to our, the nature of our desire to distract ourselves because we don't want to listen, because we don't want to listen to the cry of the inner child and the laughs and the innocence. We don't want to listen to that voice of who we really are. We'd rather just distract ourselves with catchy little jingles and earworms that get stuck in our brain and bottles of wine and tea things on TV and a refreshing, refreshing, refreshing that fucking Instagram feed. You know, like, we've all been in that spot, you know? Like, just, what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't, well, we're running. We're running from that sound that recalibrates everything and then we hopefully a lot of us get a glimpse of it and then we start to weep always like oh fuck i've been running from my love the truth of who i am mm. the child that's been inside mm. right and everything is pandering to that pandering to our fear pandering to our lust pandering to our greed pandering to this section of our expression which is the denial of who we are rather than the embracing of who we are so and i think that's the way that it's gone that's the way that we've seen the dark wizards the ones who live in the two towers not even knowing they live in the two towers because they're part of the same group they like that music because it distracts them too like people have this like nefarious illuminati construct of these people who have these terrible plans for and, and look at them manipulate no they're doing it to themselves everybody's doing it to themselves it's an expression of our own innate nature which is the refusal of that primordial note, mm. the recognition that we're in our divinity. And I think that's what we find when we look around and we observe that, but we're seeing something else come, you know? And you've been, you've been singing these songs of this sort and playing these tones and these notes for a long time. But as you've seen now, more people are paying attention because more people are ready. More people are ready to listen. Yeah. Yeah, I, f I feel um, the message is simple. It's, it's an invitation for all of us to take, have the courage and to take our fear and all those scars that have covered up our voices and silenced us, and especially the feminine in the masculine as men and the feminine, our women, and the feminine in this world, Mother Earth, and all the species that are in that umbrella, right? All of the different nations, you know, the stone people, right? All the mineral kingdom, all the animal kingdom, all the plant kingdom, it, the, the unseen beings, all of them are speaking and communicating with us at all times when we listen. But we're too busy, we're too distracted by the dings of our iPhones that we cannot hear and perceive what they're telling us. We've forgotten how to listen like our ancestors could listen immediately and could know exactly what they're saying. They're like, that's not a good idea. We shouldn't put that cell phone tower right there. You know, that's not a place where you put that. And what is the sound that that's making that we can't perceive because we don't hear in that range? But everybody else does in this whole hood, right? It throws off this whole migration pattern, right? And it's causing all these species to die. And then we still don't listen when we see the species are all dying around us. All of our relatives are dying. And this is the piece that we have to now listen. We're being invited to listen in the deepest of ways and to open our ears and our bodies and all our senses so that we can actually hear the answer and the guidance of where to go from here. Because this is it. Everyone thinks I think we're gonna bail ship and like Musk is gonna make the right rocket, you know, and we're all just gonna like split. Good luck with that. I mean, you know, it's, this is our home, y'all. I don't wanna go anywhere. I don't know about you guys, but I wanna make this a beautiful place to live for many, many eons to come. I'd like for us, I think we can do this. Um, and so I feel that the music that I'm called to make and that I love to inspire others to also make is to connect with what is the unsung song? What is the song that you came in your heart to sing? What is the vibration of your two chords that has not been spoken, that has not been offered just for its own sake? 
not for the sake of any other thing, not for the sake of making money, not for the sake of attracting a mate, for the sake of itself. You see, this, I feel, is the most redeeming quality of human beings. And that's why art is so beautiful. We're not doing it for something. We ultimately do it to do it. And I think all artists will say this, and I would like to say that we are all artists, in fact. Each and every one of us. We are all creators. You see, the consumer model, right, that Ab is talking about right here, right, that want to just make money and sell records or whatever, it's a model that's about consumption. It's a model that's about taking away your power, making you forget that you are a creator, and making you a passive consumer. You can't create. You have no authorship, you have no authority, and so you're silenced. And so you just download this thing, buy this thing, eat this thing, take this thing, keep consuming, 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 and don't ask questions. The moment you ask questions, we got problems. <laughs> and so the invitation here is us as human beings, as two-legged, is how can we remember that we are creators and from that place create from spirit moving through us as hollow bones, create something beautiful that leaves the place more beautiful than we found it. That's the meta. That's it. That's it. Ashe. Let's hear some music. Let's hear some music.
their hand to our blessed mother earth to all the ways that she moves through our bones the minerals that make up this structure the water that makes up the blood and the plasma to the fire that burns in our gut and awakens our heart and our passion to the winds of this breath we give thanks to our spirits I'd like to invite everybody here in the room and everybody at home to reflect on your own inner journey when you heard that song. And I'll share mine and go first. The first part of that song, the experience that I had, was a, a recognition of all the times that I haven't provided melody for those around me. Particularly, I started thinking about Whitney and me as a partner for her. And the times where I've walled off my song, put it away in some mortared, steel, soundproof place, played a little thing through a shitty little speaker on the outside, but my real song was tucked away because I was afraid. I was afraid that if I gave her my real song and she didn't like it, what if she turned away from my real song? Well, I'll lock that one away and I'll give her this other song. And and that way, if she rejects that song, well, that's just a little speaker with a little, you know, song. That's not me. It's not the real me in there. And I was like, fuck, that's not, what am I doing? Why would I do that? And then to lock, because I'm, when you lock that, then you lock yourself away because you're with your song always, right? So if you're not expressing the truth of your song, then you're not, you're locked, you're in your own prison. And then I think, okay, other times, instead of being that steady song that I'm always singing, that's always a melody, that's up and down, that has all the notes, sometimes I would just give her the sharpest note that I could because I was in pain and I wanted to hurt her ears. I wanted it to, ah, at some level, you know, instead of just playing the steady note. And recognizing, like, those moments and then, and then feeling the the sadness for those times, you know, that, that I could have, that I could have just sung my song and allowed it to be soft and allowed it to flow and allowed her to dance and allowed anybody who was there to listen to dance if they chose or sit if they chose. It's okay. But to really be. And then I found myself feeling the sadness, but then I found myself in judgment of the sadness. And that was worse than the sadness. That was a lot worse than the sadness. And then so I was sitting in solemn judgment of myself. And then I was like, well, or I could just smile and realize that I was learning the whole time and start to dance now and yes. not live in the past and not worry about those past moments and not judge myself for those past moments and not do anything but 
smile now and dance now and know that in the end I'm always forgiven something that you told me a long time ago because I'm just learning and just worry about from here forward not from everything that's happened in the past but just from here forward so take these lessons that we get to have these opportunities and don't use them as ways to beat yourself up for what you weren't use them as a way to guide you towards now in the future because the past is all dead and gone it's gone you can't change it you can't relive it you can't do anything you can only judge it which will only hurt you in the present that was my experience <laughs> I like that <laughs> well said you know um, so I I don't know what's going to happen I don't think any of us really do but um, you know some people claim to be psychics and see the future and things like this but one thing they all say is that it's it's malleable it's changing constantly even that even things the past is also changing because the past is this this akashic record this kind of like notion this ghost that lives in our memory and it's constantly changing right think about those memories you think you you had a perfect vision idea of that memory and then years later you're like Wait, you, you retell that to someone else. They're like, no, that's not how it went, bro. They're like, what are you talking about, right? It's, it's always changing. And so the piece that I find is so powerful is in the music really captures and also dance because they're two sides of the same coin, in fact. They're temporal art forms. They can only be experienced in the now, in fact, live, okay? Recording kind of throws a monkey wrench in this whole thing. The advent of recording means that now we can have this like captured moment, like what we're recording right now, what we're doing. People are going to listen to this a little later, and they're going to experience some level of the energy that's here, but not like we're all experiencing right now, right? And that's the thing. We kind of forget the magic, straight up magic, y'all. Magic of music and dance and the power that it has to just be in the moment, fully in the now, moment by moment by moment, un to surrendering ourselves to what arises next and allowing ourselves to get on that surfboard, to get into that flow state, to be on the edge of our fear, our terror, our bliss, and to do it anyway. And to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we do it, and especially when we do it as a collective, man, it, that is when spirit comes down. Spirit's like, thank you. Thanks for opening the portal finally, man. You put those iPods down. And let's do this, right? It's like, where are the fires? Where's grandma and grandpa and the grandkids and all the aunts and aunties and uncles, everybody hanging out around the fire, no matter what tradition, what lineage we come from, my beautiful friends. Yes, we all, whether you're Celtic, Druid, or you're talking from South Africa, or you're talking from the Far East, you know, Mongolian Plateau, we all have some form of being around a fire and making music and dancing. That is a common, I think, thread for all human beings. And it's about coming into the now, coming into the tribe, creating the portal. And that cauldron of medicine is what heals us on a deep soul level like nothing else. And I feel that's one of the pieces that why we're so sick. We're all experiencing music, but we're doing it in our own little like universe. And we've forgotten the power of experiencing it as a collective. You know, and just really letting it be. That, that's why I feel jazz really hit it, is being improvisational. And just as a norm, we're just saying, hey, this, all this music right now, it's totally, we're going to improvise. And they have a structure, and there's certain things that have been created and trained. But then the real master forgets all of that, right? It's like, it's like the black belt when you go to the white belt. You forget all the stuff you learned, and now just be it. And it's in that moment when you're able just to fully respond in the moment and to fully create in the moment and co-create with the other in the conversation like we're doing now, that the real magic happens. It's not something that we rehearsed a bunch of times. It's just perfect. The power of the now like that. And we have, we have that opportunity even if it, the music isn't live because we're live, you yes. know, right? Like so there will be these special gatherings that we can have where we get to play drums. I, I remember I was just taking a walk, and I've, I've come across it a couple times now, seemingly randomly, but it's not. I think it's on Sundays. I go walk towards the beach in Venice from the house I'm at, and there's this rad drum circle that just goes and plays from a few hours before sunset through sunset. 
and just all these eclectic people just in there either playing or dancing or moving. And I know that happens up on Cathedral in Sedona. It happens in different places. And that's special. And like, you got to try and be a part of that if you're a human, you know, like, this is, these are human things. This is what humaning is about, right? Like experiencing that. But then also recognize that you're not always going to be able to find that drum circle, but you can find a, a place where you can be alive, where you can light the fire of your own heart and dance around it yourself and feel all the spirits of your ancestors and everybody else that has co-created both the music and the earth and, your, and shaped your experience. We have the choice to be live with music yeah. or not be or just allow it to be part of the background of the dead parts of us the dead parts of us the parts that are living in the past or living in the future mm. right like only the present is really alive and so if we're present with music it is always live music <laughs> like that like the little kid running around exactly. the music is live for her see that's what i'm talking about that's what we're talking about that's what we're talking about right there right there always live just let it, let it, just really surrendering to that, to that freedom. That's true freedom. I mean, that's true freedom. You know, when, we're, when we just allow that, laugh at ourselves, laugh at that judgment. As soon as that voice starts talking, recognize it. Oh, there you are, Coyote. What's up, trickster? I recognize you. What's up? Go jump off that cliff now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I got things to do. I'm going to start making some music right now. And, and just tune in. You know, I, I love it. Um, there's an amazing uh, musician, master, one of my teachers and friends um, by the name of Bobby McFerrin. Maybe you guys have heard of this master. Yes. Yeah, he's one of the, one of the great beings, master, still alive right now on the planet, um, musically speaking especially. And I got you know, the joy to get to hang out with him uh, up at the Omega Institute this summer. Um, and in that experience, he said something which I think is really apropos right now. And, and he, you know, he, he explained... For him, it's all about improvisation. And he says that, you know, anyone can do this. The thing is, we're all so scared because we get in our head about worrying about the note we just sang or worrying about what note we're going to sing. And he says, all you got to do is worry about one note, this note right now. That's it. He's like, if you just concentrate on this one note, and then when the next note arises, fully surrender that one and just be fully in the next one. And that's it. And just go note by note by note. Don't worry about all the things you got to know, all the music theory, all of these things that say that you're good or bad or whatever. Just worry about the next note. Next thing you know, you're improvising. You're in a stream, and all of a sudden, you've gone somewhere. And sometimes that place is really cool. Sometimes it's terrible. He's like, a lot of times it is. He's like, but the thing is, the more you do it, the more you do this practice, actually, the better you get at it. It's like a new muscle. You work this muscle of flow state, of being in the present, of improvisation. And what's beautiful about it is that music is life. Life is music, in fact. And so if we do this on a day-to-day, -day, just with notes, just with singing, which we all have the voice, right? We all got these chords, remember? Then when you go face, what do I do in my life? Do I go left or right? It's easier. Because you've already been in this state where you've been doing this, improv improvising all the time. It becomes, it applies to all things in your existence. You're able to improvise in the face of life's uncertainty, which I don't is think we ever present. Yeah. Is we don't have to present? tell you. It's, it's, uh, that's the one thing that's for certain, is there is no certainty. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the ways that I like to practice this, and, and actually, you know, for those fortunate enough to go to Burning Man, it's a really great place to do this. Uh, but you can do it in any city. It's just, instead of having a plan of where you're going to go, because in Burning Man, you can get caught in plans. Oh, okay, we got Skrillex over here at 10 <laughs> o'clock in you know, Esplanade. All right, we're going to go, whatever. Like, that was that plan, and that's cool. It's cool to have a plan. And I have lots of plans. That's fine. But there's also another place to just say, I'm going to get on my bike, and I'm going to go where the bike is pulling me, where I'm being pulled and pedaled to go, and I'm going to wait for what I'm going to see at that point. Maybe it's a piece of art that I get to appreciate, or maybe it's a person that I get to meet, or maybe it's, I don't know. I mean, I, I wandered, one of the times I was there, I wandered into this random ecstatic dance and met this, like, awesome human named Vandana Hart. I met her, and she was like, hi. we were like, hi. And then she became a friend. We're not, like, the world's closest friend, but it was just, like, a little gem. You know what I mean? Like, oh. And I only found my way. I didn't know there was a fucking ecstatic dance going, and I was pedaling way farther than I planned. Like, I thought, I was like, I'm going to go take a little loop. 
That was my plan. But I listened enough to go and find this thing and drop in there and meet somebody. And, and same in a city. Like, you have two hours. What are you going to do? Well, you could come up with a plan. Yeah. Or you could just go. Just do something. Just look and listen and see if there's someone you want to talk to or say something to or experience. Or maybe it's a bookstore and you want to find a book. Or maybe what? You don't know. You just go. And I, and I think it's the blending of these knowing that we will have plans and we will have intentions and things that we were going to play chess with. And then and God will laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> we'll have those times where we just let go. And hopefully, like, imagine like a, like a salsa or a two-step or a, <clears throat> a dance that has steps, right? Like at first, when you're learning how to do that, it's all about the steps. There's not much dancing involved there at all, actually. It's more just in the mind, like, okay, am I on beat? What am I doing? How do I move my feet? What's the move? How does this not get repetitive? But then you go and watch some real people who've been really been doing it, and it's all improv, even though they're staying in that salsa format, in that two-step, whatever the thing is they're doing, they're improvising as they go, and they're fucking laughing and smiling, and it's the funnest thing. And then you watch the people learning, and they're like, okay, okay, step, step, and twirl, and oh, shit, you know? <laughs> So there is, there's always that opportunity, no matter how complicated your chess game is that you're playing, like once you understand that, then there is that moment to have the freedom and flexibility to improvise through that, you know? And, and I think that's the, that's the dance, right? Like sometimes it's radical improvisation. Like if you have an instrument in your hand, go radical. Like you can be radical or start with a song and then improvise or have a plan of your set list and then improvise, or there's just different levels of complexity and different freedoms for the f most robust, radical improvisation and trust, and then the plan that allows just a little flexibility and a little way that, that you get to change it. And that was you know, something yesterday I noticed actually with Nako. When Nako was playing some of his songs that I've listened to dozens and dozens of times, the way he sung the same song, and the, the, the way that he strum the guitar like the force that which he used and the intonation of his words made the song even though he's sung that song several hundred th I, mean, I don't know a thousand fucking times it was new yeah. it was fresh it was alive it was alive <laughs> you know and that's the choice that we all have at all points that even though he was playing a song that has fixed fixed chords and fixed lyrics and fixed everything he was improvising within those boundaries so we're always free no matter what our plan is, no matter what we got, we're always a, way more free than we think. And that's, that's, where the, that's where it's always alive and magic. But you said the, catch, the catchphrase, then we think. And it's the think, I feel that it's the prison. It's really the prison. It's, we are truly free if we can remember to embody that freedom. If we can remember to embody that freedom. Because the moment we think, there's the voice. Immediately, it's like, it's just there. Boom, right in your face, saying, you suck. <laughs> He's doing it better than you. She's doing it better than blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, thank you. Thank you. I acknowledge you. And I'm moving on right now to the next note. And that's what he says, you know, because you're going to sing bad notes. But the difference between a master and a novice is that you turn the bad note into a whole new song. You see? You turn it into something beautiful. You turn the fail when you fall on your face. In capoeira, you fall and you turn that into an au. You turn it to, you come right out of it. You turn the hardship and when you have the fail and the failure in your life, you turn it into the success. You turn it into the beauty. You turn the hardship and the really terrible things in our lives into something beautiful. And there's actually a... a I want to offer a song, I think, on that, if I can. There's an instrument that, um, that I was gifted when I started early on in my musical path. And it's, uh, it's this little thing here. You seen one of these before? I've seen a lot of your instruments. I don't think I've seen you that seen one. You've seen this though. one? So, so this one's called Dan Moy. And Dan Moy is a Vietnamese uh, jaw harp. This comes from the indigenous people in Vietnam. And this is an instrument that's very old, older than anyone knows. I don't know if there's an actual date on this. But historically and traditionally, it's made out of bamboo. And this one, though, it's made out of brass. And um, it's really interesting. When I was just about 18 years old, I took off to Asia 
And I was just like, I wanted to go to a culture, to a people that was nothing like the world I had been in. I, I was offered a chance to study abroad. And, you know, I was like, I already speak Spanish and Portuguese and English. And I was like, I don't want to go to romance countries in Europe or whatever. I'm like, what do you have that's totally like out there? And they're like, well, we have a program in China. First time ever, 1997. This is like when, when Hong Kong just went back to China. The beginning of the whole expansion of China. And so I'm like, that. I want to go there. And I'm like, this 18-year-old, I have no clue what I'm getting into. And, uh, and so I go there and I study for a year. And after I finish that year, which was really grueling and hard and really amazing, I go to Vietnam. And I get my first gig. I have my guitar with me. I walk into this school in Hanoi. And it's the United Nations Experimental School. They're teaching uh, kids, elementary school, teaching English. And I go into this gig because I need to make some money. I was poor as fuck. And so I walk into this place, right? And the teacher, she's got like 40 of kids, like maybe, you know, fifth graders bouncing around the wall. And she's like, hello, hello. And I'm like, hi, I'm, I'm here for the, um, to teach. And she's like, oh, you're the new teacher. She's like, okay, well, here you go. I'm like, is there no like lesson plan or something? I'm, you know, like there's a thing. And she's like, no, 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 you got it. And she walks out the door. And these kids are <laughs> in the room. And I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be fun. So I pull out, I pull out my guitar and I start doing the one thing I knew to do. And I started playing a song for them. I started saying, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. You know that one? And I started writing these words up, you know, like rain and clouds and writing all the things and teaching them through the song. And so I leave and I come back the next day and this teacher, she stops me in the hallway. And she's like, what did you do? And I'm like, I'm like, oh man. I was like, well, I just, you know, I was just playing music with the kids. And, and she's like, whatever you did, that's the most words they've ever remembered, ever in English. And I was like, Cool. She, and when I finished my time there, she gifted me this instrument. And, uh, and she told me the story of this instrument. And so I don't know if you know much about Vietnam, Vietnam history, especially with America. But why do you think they're, this be made out of brass instead of bamboo? Bullet shell. A bullet shell, exactly. This is a casing. And so it really touched my heart. And that's why I share this story with what we're talking about. Because that was a moment, one of the first major moments in my life where I saw, wow, Here's a people who we dropped more bombs, and this is a fact, you can look this up. More bombs were dropped by tonnage on the single city of Hanoi than all of World War II. I mean, just think about that for a second, right? Like, that's absurd. And yet, you can go now to Vietnam, and these people were so loving, so welcoming, so beautiful. And then to turn something, a symbol of such destruction, right, and make it into an instrument, that speaks to the resiliency, I think, of human beings our ability to turn something so ugly, right, into beauty. So in that, let me, uh, let me play this thing and let you hear it. By the way, this is the original vocoder, original synthesizer, before EDM was a thing. These guys had already figured it out. Check it out.
Isso do caripino, conta no madeira fina pra fazer minha tabuá, fazer minha tabuá. Conta no madeira fina, são sete machado com dois do caripina. Tava no crato. Sete machado com Deus, o teu cara é pina. Tava no crato. Tava no crato. Well, let da moi. Da moi. <laughs> well, let's let everybody dance. How about that, man? How about, how about we wrap this up? Thank you, everybody, for being here in the audience. Those of you at home, get Parangi's music, put it on, start dancing now, because that's what we're all about to do that's right here. I love you, brother. I love Thanks you, too, brother. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much, everybody. We have a... Thank you to the Magic Hour for the space and the opportunity, too. Thank you, Al.